Americans believe AI will, will provide their in-home care as they age. And here to talk with me about that is Holly Snyder from the Nationwide Retirement Institute. Holly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So happy to be here. Yeah, Nationwide has been doing these long-term care surveys for the last several years. Um, you know, we have about 70% of people over the age of 65 who are going to need long-term care services sometime in their lifetime. Um, we thought this is an extremely important topic. So this year's survey, um, we did in partnership with LIMRA and the National Council on Aging. And we were a little surprised um, how the artificial intelligence component of this really came to light. I mean, certainly as soon as um, chat GPT became so popular over the last year or so, um, that concept of thinking about artificial intelligence in time of need, when you're actually needing these long-term care services, it actually had a higher prevalence than I think even we were thinking. Um, you know, we heard from a number of people, you know, over a third of Americans said that they would accept assistance from a robot if they needed help with any of their activities of daily living, so dressing, transferring. And of course, the percentage of people who are more comfortable using a robot or some form of artificial intelligence grows the younger you go. So the millennials, you know, over 50% of them certainly were, were willing to do that. Companionship in um, the time when you've actually filed a long-term care claim, you know, there's a lot of loneliness, there's a lot of depression. So the role of robots or other types of artificial intelligence seems like it's going to have a growing use and application. Again, about a third of the people saying they talk to a robot or artificial intelligence, you know, again, back to the loneliness um, at that point in time. Physical safety and falling, um, that was probably the headline of last year's long-term care survey that we conducted, just such the increased risk um, when you're in your home, particularly with anything with, with two stories, right? So the idea of falling downstairs or falling in general, this idea that you could have robots that would actually help you, um, you know, maintain your physical safety, 70%, right, of seven out of 10 people say they'd actually use this form of intelligence to alert their family and friends if they had some type of fall. So it's been interesting as you think about, you know, at this point in time, we, we do have a pilot. We've been testing this concept with a, with a partner that we've had. You know, how could robots um, help people live in independence um, as they age? Is there, again, a safety issue or opportunity that they might have? So it's very early in this work. I think all of us feel comfortable that at this stage, anything we're talking about in the chat GPT or the artificial intelligence space, a lot of that has to do certainly with how are we experimenting, how are we testing, how are we thinking about how those applications could occur in the future. I don't think any of us think, you know, something's going to switch and there's, we're going to live like the Jetsons did, um, right? So from a standpoint of what that opportunity could be. But it has been interesting to understand how people have begun to accept this concept we were thinking about the application of artificial intelligence in retirement or in, again, a period of long-term care. And when you think about the fall detection and prevention, the remote health monitoring opportunities, um, medication management, just being able to document um, care prescriptions and how to actually take care of yourself, social engagement, cognitive stimulation. So there were all kinds of different applications that might happen, um, again, when you're in this space. When we think about long-term care, the other thing I think that was fairly profound in the survey was just the overall, shall we call it, lack of education. So this is a concern where uh, a surprisingly num high number of people, almost one in five people, thought that they already had long-term care insurance. Um, sadly, however, it's you know based on the data that we have, only about 3% of Americans actually do. So the concern there, so first of all, people not really understanding, first of all, what long-term care is and what triggers it, and then what types of um, insurance or what types of, of benefits might be in place to pay for it. It's not Social Security, it's not Medicare, it is not your health insurance. And so what we learned through the survey, and we actually um, took the survey and then we augmented it with a focus group, we found that about half of the people who thought they had long-term care insurance but did not, um, are confusing it with long-term disability insurance, and about a third of them are confusing it with health insurance. So, of course, the very alarming uh, statistic there, the concept there, is that they, have, they think they have something they don't, and as they age and as they actually need this type of, of care and service, they're going to find out that they're not at all prepared um, for that event. So, um, what certainly we want to encourage people to do is have conversations. Both the consumer should be reaching out to a financial professional, the financial professional should be reaching out to their consumers and their clients, 
Um, and even if someone tells you, yes, I'm covered, I have long-term care insurance, I think we would encourage them to not necessarily believe it or necessarily take it on um, kind of the surface. Probe, ask those questions, really try to understand you know, what, the, what the insurance or the, the capabilities they have in place might be. Um, so this is something where, again, from an action perspective, have those conversations, be able to really understand, not only with your family members and your spouses and you know, how you might think about you know, your care services when you might have a, a long-term care claim, but have that financial protection. There are some wonderful products and services that are in the market, of course, Nationwide offers them as well. But at the very beginning, again, making sure people educate themselves, there's a, you know, we have a, a healthcare cost assessment tool that you can access. It'll help you understand and estimate what could be the cost of long-term care services in your local market. Of course, that varies a lot based on the type of care you would be thinking about and certainly geographic coverage as well. And I think it's estimated that the average cost, if you go on long-term care claim, has been about $172,000 um, in total. But sadly, again, 24% of people will actually have greater than $250,000 in long-term care costs. And that can you know, wipe out a, a retirement nest egg pretty quickly. So understanding the implications, again, using tools like the healthcare cost assessment tool. Um, also, um, we have on our website, there's an opportunity, it's called the Long-Term Care Basics. Just educate yourself from a standpoint of, you know, what, um, what triggers, what tools are there, what solutions you could, you could actually bring to bear here. But just even understanding, how do I define long-term care? How is it different than general health insurance? How is it different than what you would normally get through uh, maybe a disability policy? Would all be very helpful. Um, the other, I guess, option or the other uh, takeaway that I would say from the survey was really around the fact as far as, and not surprisingly, um, how many Americans are concerned about how just to manage the overall aging process. And so part of it is, again, if you have a long-term care claim, but again, that, the, the statistic I mentioned earlier, if you have 70% of people over the age of 65 who are going to have some kind of long-term care event, you're gonna have to think about, okay, so what's next? About half of the people that we surveyed said they're really worried about becoming a burden to their family. And so it kind of goes to show that if you haven't financially planned, the odds are higher that you are going to become a financial burden to your family, particularly since the majority of people want a family member to take care of them. Um, this year, it was a little surprising. We had about a third of people who said they would rather die than live in a nursing home. And in the past, that's actually been about 60% of people and i think the year before maybe it was 54 percent. so i was a little surprised when this came out that the number was actually lower this year you might say a third seems really high in the past the surveys that we've done have indicated that's that's um actually been a lot higher so i was curious for us and we're going to you know look into that more why the number this year seemed a bit lower than what we've seen in the past the other thing um again there's this notion about of course if you're paying for long-term care you know what impact is that going to have to, on your legacy and what you were planning to set aside for your children. So psychologically and from a behavioral perspective, that causes a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, um, given the cost that I mentioned earlier. So we're excited from a standpoint of the fact that, you know, this isn't all doom and gloom. You know, the, have the conversations. There are tools available. Financial professionals are able to help you. You can educate yourself from a standpoint of the options that you have. And there are lots of services that are out there. And even though I know people, it's not a fun topic to think about, right? When, when we talk about, you know, the business I'm in and life insurance and long-term care, those are not the happiest thoughts, but the preparation that you can do now and what people really need to understand is that the younger they are when they you know, pursue these types of solutions, the better price they're going to get. So we lock in and we guarantee our pricing. Obviously, the, the younger you are, the lower those prices are going to be. And then we guarantee those prices so that over the long term, you know exactly what you're paying every month. Um, we've launched a couple of new services where we have um, a pay to age 65 or pay to 100 options. So it really makes the affordability of the products that we have so much more for so many people. Could be $100, $150 a month and you can be buying long-term care insurance for yourself. So this is one where we really are hoping that people will look at this and say, you know what, I've got some responsibility here to plan and take care of myself so that I don't become this burden on my family. 
Um, there are lots of solutions in the market that we can look at, look into, into actually um, receiving. And this is an opportunity, I guess, for us, you know, take some action, have those conversations. And this doesn't need to be as scary as it could be if you're not as, as planned for it as maybe you, you should be. Yeah. So, Holly, just a couple questions. One is when I think about long-term care insurance, I think about it being used for perhaps what might be a low probability event, but something with high negative consequences. Um, oftentimes, people look at long-term care insurance differently from how they look at, say, property and casualty or life insurance, where they say, well, if I don't use it, I, I lose it. Um, but in recent years, a number of products have come to market that uh, take the standalone product and turn it into a hybrid product with a either a, an annuity or a life insurance component. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, I love that you asked that question, Bob. Absolutely. Um, so this is one very much tr so that, again, standalone long-term care policies, to your point, is single purpose. And if you don't have that need, it is like auto and home insurance where you should be really happy that you didn't have that need, but you don't feel, feel like you really get a return on that investment. So what we have done, certainly it's, it's a linked hybrid long-term care product or linked benefit um, product. This is an opportunity where, um, you know, for us and, and nationwide, we really take pride in try, trying to create as much flexibility in the products that we put into market as possible because we know that people's needs are going to change. Um, the reasons they bought a product initially, you know, especially products that you keep for decades, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, things are going to happen, right? Life happens. So for us, we're going to take a universal life insurance chassis, kind of a product chassis. We're going to apply a long-term care benefit on top of it. And so you end up basically getting three benefits in one. One, you have, again, to your point, based on the amount of premium you're paying, a leveraged benefit, so more benefit that you're going to get as a result of having that long-term care insurance. And again, it's really easy to get a quote and see how much those benefits can be. Number two, if you don't end up having a long-term care event, which as I mentioned earlier, you'd be in the minority, right? 30, only 30% 30 of the people over age 65 will not have a long-term care event. The good news is there's still going to be a death benefit that the policy will pay to your beneficiaries, you know, obviously at the end of your life. And we have, for some of our options, not all of them, but you also can choose a return of premium option that if you don't have the long-term care event and you, for what some reason, you know, need some cash or you, you know, don't want to keep the product until it's fruition, you can actually get a return of premium. So this is one where we've tried to build in as many scenarios as we can, still keeping the products affordable as we can, to allow those types of benefits to be paid. The other thing I would offer is even for these long-term care uh, linked benefit products, they are not all created equal. And there's a very big distinction between those products that have a reimbursement mechanism where you incur an expense, you submit a receipt, and then if that, that expense qualifies under kind of the approved expenses, then you'll get reimbursed from the insurer. We offer cash indemnity benefits, meaning once you trigger, and basically it typically means that you cannot perform two activities of daily living or you have a significant cognitive um, event, then you basically have that benefit locked in and you can use that money for whatever purpose you need to. So there are no receipts, there's no worrying about an expense that you have you know, when you're under claim that maybe may not be paid for, might not have been originally included. So the, the point is a financial professional is gonna have a better understanding of the options available in the market, but it's important to ask these questions and understand that not all products are created equal from a standpoint of um, the underlying, underlying services. Yeah. So another question is um, involved, the Financial Planning Association is offering a elder planning certificate course, and, um, and we're looking at in this course the, the holistic element of helping advisors create elder plans for their clients, one part of which is the long-term care need, et cetera. But others include perhaps the legal and financial uh, uh, and health care documents that you need in place, a health care proxy, durable powers of attorney, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, any thoughts about how um, those documents and, and sort of all elements of elder care wrap around this issue of long-term care? I would, I would, I can't tell you how much I would um, support and reinforce the need for the service that you just talked about and the certificate that could be gleaned. I mean, elder care planning in total, and I'm a CPA by training, so certainly from the estate planning, the taxation, um, you know, there's so much... It's just an area that I would say from a maturity and from a planning perspective, it's very complex. Um, again, these are all at the stage in life where not the happiest of things potentially could be happening to you. 
Um, but there is certainly a lot from the estate planning, from um, the financial, from the health care, right? And to you mentioned the powers of attorneys and other things. It really is certainly advantageous to have that holistic picture. And many times it takes a cross-functional team of professionals to really bring to, together all those, those services to really give you that holistic view. So the, the fact that you are sponsoring or working with a group that is sponsoring the broader certificate in that space um, is so, so needed from a standpoint of, of these customers and from a standpoint of the industry. Financial professionals are not as well prepared or not as well trained in this um, segment, shall we say, of the, the customer's life cycle. So anything more we can do to prepare them, um, it's, it's complex. There's a lot that's here. We want the financial professional to certainly be informed about the advice they're offering. And we can certainly imagine um, why many may not proactively have these conversations with their customers because maybe they don't feel as comfortable because of those nuances that they could. So what you're just describing sounds like a wonderful way to better prepare um, financial professionals and others to be able to proactively enter in these conversations with their clients. Yeah. So last question. Um, I'm good friends with Joe Coughlin from the MIT AIDS Lab. I've interviewed Karen Etkin, who runs the Gerin Te Technologist. Uh, I'm excited about what age tech and AI could uh, do for uh, aging Americans. Uh, do you have any, uh, do you, are you optimistic about what the future holds in store when we think about AI and, and age tech? You know, it kind of it kind of blows my mind, Bob. <laughs> so, but yes, I would say I'm really optimistic, and I'm not even sure I can, f at this point in time, really even comprehend the possibility. I made the joke about the Jetsons earlier, but why does that not seem so far fetched as maybe it would have, you know, five years ago? What I would emphasize at this point in time, because there's so much optionality, there's just so many things that are under review right now. I would just continue to reinforce that experimentation taking our time to really understand, again, it's a broad dimension of optionality as far as the benefits that AI could offer in this space, right? We talked about a few of them before, um, but think about the, the electronic tools at home that could do better health monitoring and alerts and triggers and fall assessment. And there's, there's, there's so much in this space. I would just encourage us though, to have the appropriate, just like I said, we're partnering with someone right now that we're testing and we're studying and we're doing research from a standpoint of how these tools can be adequately deployed. We just wanna make sure we take our time and fully understand um, there could be privacy concerns from the individual. Um, it's hard to imagine what you know some of the other potential unintended consequences could be, but there's no doubt, right? We we feel like we've turned a corner. There is absolutely we're on this path. There is more in this space that's going to happen. But I would just encourage us. Let's take it one step at a time. Make sure we have the research in place that we're fully testing some of these new capabilities and that we're fully. Um, from a transparency perspective, fully disclosing to anyone who's participating with these devices or these robots or anything else, what, you know, kind of what they're into, how their data is going to be used. Um, so make sure there's no misunderstanding um, as far as, you know, what might happen um, with that information in some sort of public forum. Mm. Well, Holly, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, you are very welcome again. This is an exciting topic for us. And again, appreciate your partnership, Bob. Thank you so much.